In this lesson, we are going to discuss half-angle identities. Let us first recall our double measure identity for cosine, which involves sine. That is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. If I solve for sine squared theta, I transpose this on the left-hand side. This becomes 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And therefore, sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine 2 theta all over 2. Now, notice the angle here. This is theta and this is 2 theta. So, what happened here? From theta, it became 2 theta. That is, it got multiplied by 2. Suppose that instead of theta, we'll have alpha over 2. This will now be equal to 1 minus cosine. Look at what happened here. From theta, it became 2 theta. Similarly, here, alpha over 2 will now become alpha. It will be multiplied by 2. And this is now our half-angle formula. Now, take note that I already have a square root here because I got rid of the square here in sine theta over 2. How do we choose whether the sine is plus or minus? This sine will be determined by the quadrant of theta over 2. You have to know first the quadrant of theta over 2. Similarly, we can derive that the formula for cosine theta over 2 is square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. Now, notice that the only difference between the two is that if you have sine, inside you have 1 minus. And if we combine these two, we can now get the formula for tangent theta over 2. Tangent theta over 2 is sine theta over 2 over cosine theta over 2. So this divided by this, you will get this one. This is square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. I will no longer prove this two also. However, I like this better because it doesn't involve square root. So let's evaluate the values of this expression. So let's start with cosine of 15 degrees. Let me just write here again the formula for cosine theta over 2. That's plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine theta all over 2. First, how do we know whether it's plus or minus? 15 degrees belongs in quadrant 1 and therefore your cosine is positive. This is positive square root of 1 plus cosine of what angle? Look at this one. From theta over 2, this became theta. So this is cosine 30 degrees all over 2. We now have 1 plus cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. All over 2. This is just a matter of simplifying this expression. And this is the answer. I actually prefer to evaluate cosine 15 degrees as cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Because this one will not involve square root of the square root. Next, let us go to sine of negative 165. Sine is an odd function, so therefore this negative here will go out. This is negative sine 165. I will just evaluate sine 165. 165 times 2 is equal to 330, which is special. We can evaluate the value of cosine of 330. Using this, sine of 165 is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine of 330 degrees over 2. Again, what happened there from theta over 2, it became theta here. And how do we know whether it's plus or minus? Where is 165 degrees? 165 degrees is in quadrant 2. So therefore, sine is positive. 
Therefore, this is square root of 1 minus cosine of 330 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And therefore, it's equal to 2 minus square root of 3 all over 2. Next, we're given that cosine theta is 3 fifths, tangent theta is positive. We want to find the exact value of the following. This formulas over here will all involve plus or minus square roots. Therefore, the first step that we have to do is to determine the quadrant containing theta over 2. So we have cosine theta is positive and tangent theta is positive as well. Cosine theta is positive on quadrants 1 and 4. But we want tangent theta to be positive, so therefore theta is in quadrant 1. Now, if theta is in quadrant 1, that means that theta over 2 is also in quadrant 1. Because this means that theta is between 0 to pi over 2, which means that if you divide everything by 2, we get that theta is between 0 and pi over 4. Hence, theta over 2 is also in quadrant 1. So let us start with sine theta over 2. This is positive square root of 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. And we just substitute. And therefore, this is 2 over square root of 5. Next, for cosine theta over 2, it's positive square root also. 1 plus cosine theta all over 2. So that's... Square root of... 1 over 5, or 1 over square root of 5. And lastly, for tangent of theta over 2, we no longer have to make use of any identities because we already obtained the values of sine theta over 2 and cosine theta over 2 earlier. That is, we get 2 over square root of 5, all over 1 over square root of 5, that's equal to 2. Next, let us prove that secant squared theta over 2 is 2 all over 1 plus cosine theta. Now, I will start with the left-hand side. From theta over 2, I want to express it in terms of cosine theta only. Secant squared theta over 2 is the reciprocal of cosine squared theta over 2. And from our half measure identity, this is 1 plus cosine theta over 2. The reciprocal of 1 plus cosine theta all over 2 is 2 over 1 plus cosine theta, which is exactly your right hand side. Next, let us prove this. I will start from the left hand side. Let me first expand this. This becomes square of the first term, sine squared theta over 2, minus twice the product, plus square the last term. And then if you look at this one, sine squared theta over 2 plus cosine squared theta over 2, this is equal to 1. Now, if you look at this one, is this equal to sine of theta? I will be using the double measure identity, but I will not use theta because you already have theta here. Let's use alpha instead. Sine 2 alpha is equal to 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. From this... Going to this one, what happened? Alpha, alpha, it became 2 alpha. It got multiplied by 2. So therefore, your theta over 2 here will be multiplied by 2 as well. 
So therefore, this is 1 minus 2 sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2 is sine of theta, which is exactly your right-hand side. For our last example, we're given the following, and we want to find the exact value of sine A over 2 minus 2B. First, we simplify this using our sum and difference identities. This is sine, so we have sine cosine, cosine sine, and we plug in the angles A over 2, 2, B, A over 2, 2, B. This is minus, so therefore, this is also minus, which means that we have to look for each of the following. Sine A over 2, cosine A over 2, cosine 2 beta, and sine of 2 beta. So let us first look for the values for A over 2. Since the formulas for half measure identities involve plus or minus, we have to get first the quadrant containing A over 2. And we get that from the quadrant of A. A is in quadrant 1, which means that A over 2 is also in quadrant 1. So therefore, we have plus and plus here. This is square root of 1 minus cosine A all over 2. This is square root of 1 plus cosine A over 2. And that means that we have to get the value of cosine A. We only have the value of sine A. How do we get the value of cosine A? We use x, y, r. Sine A is 3 fifths. That's y over r. So we get 3 is here r is 5, x, y here are all positive because a is in quadrant 1, so therefore x is 4, which means that cosine of a is x over r. We get 4 fifths. So this is positive square root of 1 minus 4 fifths over 2. This is square root of 1 over 10. And this becomes square root of 1 plus 4 fifths all over 2. That's square root of 9 over 10 or 3 over square root of 10. So we now have the values for sine A over 2 and cosine A over 2. Next, let's get the values for 2B. We want to get the values of cosine 2B and sine 2B. If we go back to our problem, cosine of B is given. So therefore, I will just make use of the formula for cosine 2b involving cosine b only. That is 2 cosine squared b minus 1. Cosine b is negative 1 half. And therefore, this is negative 1 half as well. Next, for sine 2b, that's 2 sine b cosine of b. We're already given that cosine b is equal to negative 1 half and b is in quadrant 2. Note that we do not have to get x, y, and r, although you can do that, but take note that this is special. What is that angle for which the cosine is equal to negative 1 half? What is that? That is... 2 pi over 3, right? The reference angle is pi over 3. So therefore, your sine of B is equal to positive square root of 3 over 2. So that's 2 sine of B is square root of 3 over 2 times cosine of B, which is negative 1 half. So therefore, this is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. Another method that you can use also is b is equal to 2 pi over 3. And therefore, that means that 2b is equal to 4 pi over 3, right? And now you can get 
cosine of 2b and sine of 2b. Cosine of 2b is cosine of 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 is just in quadrant 3. So therefore, this is also negative 1 half. And sine of 2b is sine of 4 pi over 3. And that's negative square root of 3 over 2. So you can also get the same values. Now we are ready to plug in the values. Sine a over 2 is equal to 1 over square root of 10. Cosine 2b is negative 1 half. Cosine a over 2 is 3 over square root of 10. And sine 2b is negative square root of 3 over 2. Therefore, this is equal to negative 1 plus 3 square root of 3 all over 2 square root of 10.